Okay, a new project. Uh, a lot of my videos, I get tired of the camera shaking around and I can't hold it steady and maybe it's because I drink too much coffee, but no, I don't think so. Uh, it's just hard to hold one of these cameras steady and I want to start taking some better quality video. So this is a, a little sample of a, a mixture of ideas I've seen on YouTube on how to make a gimbal. And uh, I'm using a little bit of knowledge that others have shared. And basically, this piece right here is going to be cut off and a handle made to go on to this right here, which will be the main outside collar. So a little hard to picture right now, but basically, uh, let me just set this here like a that and do like that and you can see I'm gonna have some kind of a bolt gone in there maybe up here I'll have to cut this angle with the grinder to get it right and get it close now this is pretty big it doesn't need to be this big but this was scrap laying around uh, it's what I had so I'll uh, be cutting a hole in the top of this with a hole saw to uh, make it big enough to allow this piece to sit in there and swivel around without hitting the edges and it'll kind of look neat because I'm going to also cut this down short, cut it in half so that this edge and this assembly is hidden inside of this. So it'll, from an outside appearance, you won't see all of those circles that you see when you see these other gimbals, you know, just something different. I don't know. Uh, terminal uniqueness is one of my sufferings, I guess. Uh, in the back here, we have a little glue gun. I don't know. I paid four or five bucks for it at a at a goodie store and I've never used a glue gun so I'm going to tinker with it a while and get a feel for how it works because I'm going to use it to mount the bearings and hold the bearings in place the bearings that these bolts are going to ride on see and this bag here is just some glue sticks for the glue gun I got six or eight of them in there uh, figure that ought to be enough uh, anyway this box here look how big this box is I want to hold this up here get you a good idea look at that that's a, that's a good size box you can see that's about almost a foot wide three four inches tall you know about seven seven inches or so maybe a little over seven inches wide that away but anyway this box contains bearings i'm going to open it here and show you look look at this box this box just look at this this box contains one little package now i already opened it it had actually some bubble wrap in it but that little package is the bearings and here's the bearings from a place called uh kick e bearings 10 pieces anyway i'll put the link in the description below for these bearings and let me just pull these out here and there they are you can see the baggie of the bearings there's 10 of them and they're a nice little bearing quarter inch hole basically and of course those bearings will be mounting two of them here for the first pivot two of them on here for the second pivot and uh, then that second pivot will have a bolt that goes through this final piece in the middle see it'll go all the way through so it'll pivot this will pivot this away like that see or this way you see and then uh, let me put these bearings back in the box and then uh, this unit here, which will be cut down, will sit in here with a set of bearings, and it'll sit in here with a set of bearings, and it'll pivot like that. And this piece of scrap rebar, old rusty rebar, I bent this purposely. I put a bend in it. Can you see that's bent? See, look. Whoop, there's a bend. See the bend? There's a bend. The reason for that is this is going to be the counterweight that goes in the bottom of this piece of PVC, and that bend is going to keep it halfway securely in place now i'm going to pack this bottom hole uh with something some kind of cover maybe epoxy, maybe uh maybe some of that hot glue i don't know we'll see but basically this is the counterweight i think it's enough weight to for all that a camera weighs to to keep it steady definitely steadier than my hand will hold it so so there's your uh main parts you got something i'm going to use for a handle and your three pieces now here I've got some bolts, this bolt, and I'm using the lock nut style with the nylon. See the nylon inside the lock nut there? Uh, I'm using the nylon lock nut. 
and uh, basically a bolt and a nut for this handle to go on to, to this. And here we have two bolts, two nuts. These will be the bolts that, uh, that we'll be using for this part, for the uh, first gimbal, the first gimbal rocker. And then this long bolt, which is a little too long, it's gonna be for the last gimbal that goes through this piece here, which will be mounted inside here, which will be down like this. It'll sit lower, of course, and that bolt will go basically, uh, let me get that to stand steady. This bolt will go all the way through. It'll set on two of those bearings, and it'll give us this gimbal. Now, this bolt's too long, as you can see, even when I center it up, it's gonna be too long, as you can see. And uh, rather than another trip back to the store, or buying or buying extra bolts that, that I might not need. I just bought a longer one, figured I'd whip it down with a hacksaw. So I'll take about a half inch or so off the end of this bolt because we don't want it to rub against this when it pivots. So that's the idea. That's the plan, that's the, uh, that's the plan. Uh, didn't make any engineering blueprints. Here's, here's, here's an engineering blueprint for another project I'm working on, which is a silt fence to installer to be mounted on the front of a bulldozer but i had to move that out of the way because i wanted to get started on this little project a little bit because uh i want to provide better quality recordings so anyway that's it for now i'm going to play with the glue gun a while get a feel for it i'm going to cut the holes in this thing for the bearing i'm not going to waste your time showing you how to do all that because when you see the finished product uh you should be able to figure out how to do it and if you can't you're not a person that should be using power tools and building stuff of this nature. So anyway, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good one. Okay, I drilled the hole in this tube for the gimbal and I drilled the hole up here that's gonna hold that camera assembly. These don't have to be perfectly straight and centered because this piece, the camera holder, the one that's holding the camera right now in a little mini tripod, has a little adjustment. It swivels every which way, so I didn't, I'm not worried about perfect. Okay, how we doing today? Gonna do a little status update here once I get this camera adjusted kind of the way I think it should be. Yeah, it looks close enough. So here's the deal. Uh, didn't want to bore you with the details, but basically I put these holes in, in the PVC to hold these bearings. You know, these bearings we looked at a little while ago. See how that seat's right right in there? I'm just going to use some of that hot glue from the glue gun to see how it works. If it don't work, I'll use epoxy. But anyway, <clears throat> I took this pipe that you saw earlier. I cut the bottom off smooth with a cut wheel on a four and a half inch grinder thingy. And I cut this vertical and even put a tiny little notch in it that you probably can't see, but it's there. And I drilled a hole. Now the trick to this hole is you drill downward with your drill. And you use an older bit, so if it breaks you don't care. And then as you're running it, you slowly angle it upwards. And it makes these little notches so that when your quarter inch bolt that holds this here in place, see, sits level. See that? See how that is? Yeah, there's no magic here. It's just a matter of taking that drill bit while it's running downward here and angle it a little bit and boom there you go and then this you see we got a quarter inch hole here that'll go through there now this isn't the bolt i'm using but i'll basically be using a bolt and putting a nut down here on the inside a shorter bolt and there will be our handle and yeah i know it's not perfectly straight i could do some more work on it but who cares it's a gimbal and as long as it keeps the camera straight that's all i care about so anyway anyway if you want perfection, perfection takes time. I don't need perfection. So I'm going to show you something else here. I cut this piece in half that's going to sit in here and be our first uh, gimbal rotation thingy here, you know. And uh, anywho, what you need to know about this is, now when I cut it, I used a cut wheel on a grinder. Very sloppy job, as you can see. See how sloppy that is? I could have used a hacksaw, had it perfect. I uh, thought the grinder would go quicker, but this stuff here didn't like the grinder, so the cut wheel on the grinder. But that's okay. 
Uh, rather than waste time cutting the other half of it perfect with a hacksaw, I figure it this way. Since this will be up under here, and you're only going to see the top ring anyway for the most part, who cares what the bottom looks like? I don't. I don't really care a bit. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you. Another thing I'll share with you is I used a 5 8 inch paddle bit to drill these holes. Now, this paddle bit has a broken tip. I broke it on another project, forgot to replace it, so all I had was this big monstrosity 18 inches long 5 8 bit, but it worked, it done the job. Another thing I'll share with you is you're going to get sharp little edges on this PVC when you cut holes in it, even when you drill holes in it. I just take my utility knife and kind of scratch around here on an angle. Be careful not to cut yourself. Uh, if you're an amateur, cut, cut with the knife away from you. If you know what you're doing, you can use your thumb safety. That's a, you know, I know someone will say you shouldn't show people doing that, but, but if you do this, you better know what you're doing. Better be careful because you can cut yourself. Word of caution, I'm not going to be responsible for you cutting yourself. As I said earlier, some people are not meant to play with tools of any type. So, anywho, I also wanted to show you something. We talked about this piece of uh, metal here that I purposely bent, this piece of scrap rebar. I drilled a hole in the bottom of this here tube. This is the main center tube for the gimbal, and that hole is going to have a quarter inch bolt through it. Now, this will be inside. But you see the diameters here with a quarter inch bolt through there this can't fall out and then to help keep it from wanting to shake all over i'm going to do a little try a little precision and i'm going to put the quarter inch hole right in here that's going to also be the hole that the bolt comes through for this final gimbal action so it's going to be its gimbal bolt and it's going to keep this from popping up out of the way it shouldn't because i bent this and it's going to be in there tight anyway but just wanted to share that with you then up here i'll drill a hole right through have a bolt on here and that bolt sticking out will be where we mount the bracket that holds the actual camera now that bracket's in use right now it's holding that camera right now as i make this video so i'll have to take it off and have a little shakiness in the video when i show you the finished product and also when this is all said and done i'm going to paint it so Anyway, just wanted to give you a quick update on where we stood and how things were uh, progressing. Hello. Well, we're back here at the uh, little project again. I uh, wanted to run something by you. A mistake I found. The long bolt that I got to go through the final gimbal it's going to go all the way through this pipe when it sits in the middle is the wrong kind of bolt it has no threads down here see and i need jam nuts against this i need jam nuts not real tight uh fairly tight uh, against this here tubing and also to keep it from to keep it tight so the bearings do the work and this isn't turning on the shaft here and it keeps it from sliding side to side you can't have that so you need a bolt here that has threads all the way through now you could cut a piece of all thread quarter inch all thread to the length if you have it or you could do like i did and you could get a uh three and a half inch is what i needed here or three inch i think it was a three inch carriage bolt uh quarter 20 it has threads all the way down it and then I just zipped the head off of it because it was a carriage bolt with a square shank inside of there I just cut that off so just want to let you know that that's something you might want to be aware of uh, where you need your nuts and uh, also I talked earlier about a brass bushing sleeve here's an example of one of those if you can see it here uh, I don't know what they're used for doors windows I don't know but you know it's just a brass smooth bushing and uh here again if you didn't want to buy the bearings you can use you can usually get these for i don't know a nickel a piece or a dime a piece somewhere but here again it's a pretty smooth action just just letting you know that i wanted to show you that also wanted to show you something important here to bear in mind when you're uh, assembling this and putting it together see you need to get this piece ready first and you need to put this piece in here first 
if you don't, you'll have a battle, okay? Uh, you could put this in here, but it's, it's just as easy to hold off and put this in first. Put this together, put it in place, slip it in here, get it all set up. And uh, you, don't, you don't need to put the bearings in right away. You can just get it in there. And this last gimbal in the middle, see, since you can rock it, you can rock it and have plenty of room to get your three-inch bolt all the way through and through the center gimbal. And uh, even at that angle, you can still work with it. So just want to let you know that so it don't get all jammed up. And wanted to, wanted to share that with you so you see a little bit about uh, how to assemble it. Otherwise... If you put this together first and then try to put it in here, it might be a little snug because you need the room to pivot this and get this. Let me show you that close up. You need space for this to be to angle and get down in here, and, and it's not going to do it if it has that long gimbal hanging on it, see? So you want to put this one in first, and then your bearings and whatnot, and then after this one's in, then you put your final gimbal together, see? So I wanted to show you that. Okay. Okay, so that's that. That's that. Also, I wanted to bring to your attention, you might not be using the same size pipe that I'm using. You might be using different size PVCs. You can use different, you can use different sizes, but what to be aware of is make sure that with your bolts and your assemblies and your nuts and whatever you're using, that when they rock, they don't jam the side. Uh, depending on how much movement your, your gimbal is going to have and how you're going to physically use it uh, can make a difference. So I wanted to, wanted to share that with you. Just something to be aware of uh, using different size pipes. You see, if you had a pipe that was only a quarter inch gap here, that'd be really tight because when it rocked, if it rocked that far, your nuts would be hitting the side of your edge here, see? So I just wanted, wanted to bring that to your attention and things to think about, you know? Things to think about. So, so that's that part. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this assembly, put the bearings in, glue them with the hot goo gun, and uh, and we'll uh, go for there. And I am going to use, like I say, I am using these nylon nuts on the very outside of the bearing just to keep it from coming out. And that should do us, that should do us. I'm not using nylon nuts in here to hold this tight because I think two pieces of two quarter nuts uh, tight against this is gonna hold it. I think it's gonna hold it fine. Got a 7 16 wrench here for tightening those nuts. Usually just your finger on the other end will work because you're going into plastic and once it gets a bite, it gets a bite. So, uh, but you might need two 7 16 inch wrenches because that's the size you need for a uh, quarter 20 nuts. Or you might need to use a 7 16 wrench and, and maybe a little adjustable wrench if you don't have two 7 16 wrenches. So, okay, that'll do it for now. I'm going to put this baby together and do some gluing and just do some pre-testing, make sure it kind of works the way I want before I do the painting. Yeah, okay. Okay, another update here. Now, we already had this set up. Now I've put my uh, piece of threaded uh, three inch bolt through here, centered it, centered it so it's centered. Two nuts holding it on the final gimbal tight. And now this, see, there's the top, the smooth, nice side. And another way to tell if this is centered is when you put it here, see that nut? I'm putting it against that edge right there. And see there's just a hair gap up there. Then I flip it around and do the same thing. I got all, almost the same gap. Wrong side. Let's try that again. Okay. Now I've got my piece of threaded material all the way through the center gimbal. Two jam nuts tightened against it. Uh, I put a little pressure on them to hold them together. And 
you want to make sure this is centered. It's going to be easier for you. Because here, remember, when the, when this is uh, when this is in in this piece, which is in this piece, you don't want these bolts to be able to hit these edges. See? Okay. So I'm letting you know that. Now, the way to tell if you have it centered, you can measure it from your nut out to the edge, or you can lay it down against an edge make a little mark on it with a marker a piece of cardboard like here and flip it over and then check your other one you can do it that way if you don't have a tape measure uh, I would hope that if you're doing anything like this or you're a person that plays with tools that you had a tape measure or even a 29 cent or maybe nowadays they cost 99 cents 12 inch uh, you know uh, high school uh, ruler you know so anyhow that's the deal there wanted to show you that and I'm going to be popping this in into place and let's see if I figured it right now that can go in there now these bearings that are going to go on these bolts like so I'm just kind of pushing them physically with my thumb right now for now like so now I'll set this on down I'll put this other bearing into place like so and you might have to play with these nuts a little bit these these inner the inner jam nuts is what I'm playing with see to to get my bearings properly seated you got to have these jam nuts in there first you, you could probably you might you could get away without them I suppose I, it's just a me thing you might not need these inner jam nuts I like them because it just uh, just makes the assembly, I don't know, it, it, to me it seems better, that's all. That's all I'm going to say about that. To me it seems better, that's all. Now you might have a, a little tightness, you know, getting your bearing set. Now like here I've got the bearing pretty flush to the outer edge of this. PVC, which is my goal. But sometimes it's not perfect, so you take something like a maybe the back end of a screwdriver and you you give it a little tappy tap, see? And you get it sitting in there pretty close to flush. You know, here again, don't need perfection. Yeah, you know, perfection takes too much time. Way too much time. Or you could take a hammer, back of a bolt do like a that that'll set them in pretty nice you know that'll work real nice just tap on the bearing the outer bearing collar you're not gonna you're not gonna break this bearing because you're not beating on it with a 30 pound sledge you know so you don't have to worry about that so anyway I'm just showing you some some tricks to get these bearings to where they need to be that's all so all we're doing here, getting them ready to put that hot glue to it, see? Getting ready to put that hot glue to it. That's all. That's all we're doing here. Getting ready for hot glue. But, as you can see, the bearings aren't even glued in yet, and they're already, yeah, I would say pretty much working. Pretty much. Pretty much, I would say. The thing to remember when you're setting these bearings if you use jam nuts like I'm using you got to back your jam nut off so that you can set the bearing or the bearing hits the jam nut see and it won't go down so so just wanted to bring that to your attention something that might be some handy handy knowledge for you might be
be some handy knowledge. Okay, so I'm going to finish setting all the bearings, and and uh, I'm not going to waste your time showing you this, but basically now that this part's almost done, I'll get the bearings in and then see how this will slide right up in there. Boom. I'll do the same thing. Uh, put my bearings on the outer, and, the, and by golly, the gimbal will be about what we call done. Yep, that'll be that. All right, so that's it for now. Okay, completed the gimbal. Haven't painted it yet, but there it lies. And I'm just going to do some quick comparison testing. Uh, here's me holding the camera in my hand. And uh, I'm doing a little pan around a circle here. Not too fast, just kind of a steady around the circle type thing. Now this autofocus on the camera is jumping in and out. Uh, I can set it to manual so it doesn't, but this is just a preliminary test. So I'm going to do a, now I'm going to go back the way I came, move a little bit and stop, move a little bit and stop. Yeah, something like a, I don't know, a clock. Yeah, and there's 12 o'clock and there's 11 o'clock and 10 o'clock, maybe nine o'clock maybe eight o'clock so and here's another pan around the circle now i'm going to try and up and down so i'm standing still swinging down to the floor swinging on up to the ceiling or close to it and now i'm going to do the same thing because of the autofocus i'm just going to go and stop Go and stop, go and stop, go and stop, stop, go and stop, go and stop. Okay, next I'm going to put the camera on the new gimbal and see what happens. Okay, now I have the camera mounted in the gimbal. And let's just see, I'm going to, I'm just doing a little pan here. And I'm holding it as steady as I can with the gimbal and I'm gonna let the gimbal self balance there a little bit and I'll do a little pan here do a little pan over here come over to here And again, this is this is with the gimbal. This is mounted in the gimbal that I just built. Maybe I had a little too much coffee. There is a, a tiny bit of shakiness, but that's me. That's not the gimbal. The gimbal itself seems to work pretty decent by comparison. And now this model... Uh, of Samsung that I'm using this model here this model doesn't have the uh, the uh, automatic correction uh, stabilization built into it uh, this model here so so on this one it's definitely all by hand all by hand uh, even on a gimbal if there's a slight movement it'll pick it up uh, there's no stabilization but I definitely see some improvement being on the gimbal as compared to handheld. So I'll be using this gimbal in the future. That'll be it for now. Good luck if you decide to take on this project. Bye now.